Hey guys, welcome to my second video on physiology and today's topic is homeostasis, how the body is balanced. So let's get started. Homeostasis, what does that even mean? So homeo means similar, stasis, stable or stand still. So homeostasis is how to keep the body's internal environment constant. This is different from hemostasis because hemo means blood. Hemostasis is how to control your blood, talking about bleeding, coagulation and stuff like that. That's why we have the field of hematology, which is the study of blood. So homeostasis is different from hemostasis. When you first start learning about anything, what's the first question? What's the definition? So what is homeostasis? It's the maintenance of nearly constant circumstances in your body's internal environment. The internal environment of your body is usually the ECF, extracellular fluid, as I've told you before in the previous video. As an example here, you have the hydrogen ion concentration. Usually they should be less than 5 nanomoles per liter. This is 0 0.00000005 moles per liter. Very tiny amount, but it's tightly regulated. In fact, only a narrow range of pH is compatible with life. Usually the pH is between 7.35 and 7.45. Theoretically, you can live between 7 and 7.7 pH. Anything less than that or more than that, you're dead. These numbers are not actual numbers. The pH is a logarithm. So they are very teeny tiny amounts of hydrogen. Any excess, any decrease, and you're done. So I see homeostasis is very serious. But what's the definition of disease? Disease is nothing but a disrupted homeostasis. Wow, so disease is called pathology, homeostasis is called physiology, a new field of science is born, pathophysiology. So how does your body work? You have the good stuff such as nutrients, the bad stuff, the waste products and carbon dioxide, and you need communication systems. So how to get the good stuff? To get nutrients you need to eat, this is the gastrointestinal tract. To breathe, you need the respiratory system to get oxygen. Okay, now how to give the food and oxygen to every single cell in your body? You need the circulatory system or cardiovascular system, also known as CVS. Not the pharmacy, okay. Then we have the bad stuff, the waste products. The liver and the kidney will deal with this junk. For communication, fast communication, you have the neurons very fast. For slow communication, you will need stuff called hormones. So let's talk briefly about every system in your body. We start with the circulatory system or cardiovascular system. Heart, pumping blood into arteries. They go into capillaries or capillary bed. Exchange will occur with the cells. Blood will give the cells nutrients and oxygen and will take the waste products and CO2. Plasma, which is in the blood, is continually mixed with the interstitial fluid between the cells. Very important. Now let's go to the lungs. Now we have all the CO2 and waste products going back to the heart. The heart will pump them in a pulmonary artery, will pump the CO2 to the lungs. The lungs will breathe out the CO2 called exhalation and will breathe in the oxygen called inhalation. Now oxygen can go to the blood and the cycle goes over again. CO2 is the most abundant of all metabolic products. Let's talk about the GI and the liver. You eat from your mouth, of course, and then it goes to the stomach, then the small intestines. Not all of the absorbed stuff is cool. No, we need some lab to tell us. Is it useful to us now? Should we wait and store it? Should we convert it to other more usable stuff? And this is called the liver. 
your body's laboratory. Your body's laboratory will change chemical compound. It will store products and it will eliminate waste products. Very cool. And now the kidney. The kidney is king. Filters the plasma, some of which will be reabsorbed, other will be excreted in urine. Goodbye. Acid-base regulation to regulate the pH of your blood. Also some endocrine function. To the tech savvy here, let's talk about communication. You have the very fast nervous system composed of neurons or nerve cells. Starts usually in the skin to pick stimuli. So this is the skin and this neuron here is called the sensory neuron. Let's say that you're touching a hot object. Okay, very hot. So it will tell your CNS or central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, that there is something hot here. It will relay it through an interneuron to another one, which is now a motor neuron, to tell your muscles, pull up your hands from this hot object, you idiot. Second, the slow system, the hormonal system. We have some glands called endocrine glands, such as this nice thyroid gland, and it will secrete thyroid hormone directly into the bloodstream. Thyroid hormone is carried by the blood, and now thyroid hormone is like the oven of your body. Everything is hot, everything is working so fast. That's why patients with hyperthyroidism, they have, they feel hot all the time. All of their systems are working very fast. They lose a lot of weight, etc. On the other hand, Patients with low thyroid level, also known as hypothyroidism, they gain weight, they feel cold. It's the opposite. So hormones are very, very important. Before I let you go, here's a question for you. The extracellular fluid has blank sodium ions than its intracellular counterpart. So does the extracellular fluid has more sodium, less sodium, the same sodium as the intracellular, or is it variable? If you'd like to know the answer, go to my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash medicosis. And let me know what you think the answer is down below in the comments. I'll see you in the next video with a new physiology video. But now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, I'd like to see you on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.